Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're watching this and you have not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. So as you can see, I'm super excited to have my first guest on my channel today. I'm not alone today, I'm with Mbali. Mbali is a lecturer and a PhD candidate, and she's also a recipient of the 2019 Wonder Woman in Science Award. So Mbali is basically a really, really, really phenomenal woman that is doing great things in the field of science. So Mbali, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> it's so nice to be here. This is my first YouTube video. So, oh yeah, and it's a black girl scientist. So this is like, um, it's my first time being featured. Yeah, I feel so honored. Excited. Thank you for inviting oh, me. Oh, thank you so much for being I on the channel. I feel so honored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so please, can you introduce yourself for us? So my name is Mbali Kotela. I come from Kwasanti, and I am 32 years old. I feel very old. <laughs> you do not look a day with me. And <laughs> Um, I'm currently lecturing at UKZN and I'm also a PhD student. Um, I also do a whole lot of other stuff on the side, but we'll get back to that a bit later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so please um, tell us about your educational background, like mm -hmm. walk us through, you know, from the moment that you were interested in science, maybe you can also tell us a little bit about what your PhD is about mm -hmm. and, and just your journey through, um, you know, from when you started schooling to where you are now. Yeah. So. I growing up I actually wanted to be not a crude boom. I'm sure you know. Yes. It. <laughs> I really wanted to be the person behind the weather and the news kind of setup. So I signed up for geography and environmental management, uh, which is a degree that I did through UKZN for it's a three year degree. I absolutely loved it because I was so inspired by my geography teacher oh, wow. uh, from Pinetown Girls represent. <laughs> uh, she was she was so passionate about geography and made me really put in love with the world around me and the nature around me. So I enrolled for that degree. After that, I then signed up for a postgrad diploma in uh, policy and development studies. Wow. And then after that, I did a master's degree uh, with agriculture, okay. uh, with food security, especially focusing on that. I'm really passionate about food security issues. Oh, wow. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. So what is your, uh, so that was your PhD on food security? I mean, yes, yes, okay. yes. So after the master's, then I enrolled for a PhD study which um, is taking long, but a hey, it's part of the process, hey. But also, like, I find now that I'm doing my PhD yeah. as well, and I really am interested to know, like, how other people land up there. Like, why did you decide to do a PhD? Um, I decided to do a PhD by default, really. Um, I'm surrounded by people who are in academia, okay. uh, people who thrive in research, and I realized that actually it rubbed off me in a very big way. And I love education, I love learning, I love studying. So being around people like that also kind of rubbed off on me. I and I found myself lecturing and doing a PhD, which wasn't really my career plans 10, mm. 15 years ago. I don't want to lie. <laughs> I didn't so how, do you, how do you find that? Because I actually touched on the subject before. Mm. Um, now you're going a little bit off topic, but I touched on the subject about how when you're doing a PhD, you feel like you're going to be roped into academia. Yeah. Like, is that what you really wanted to do? Um, it's not what I wanted to do, but now that I'm in there, I don't mind doing it. Okay. I don't mind doing it. Okay. Um, I've seen the impact that um, amazing teachers have in the future of their students. Amazing and geography teacher. I would love to one day be that kind of person as well. For someone else. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Okay, so what is your current occupation right now? I think we've already touched on that a little bit, mm -hmm. but can you just tell us about like your daily kind of life as a PhD candidate yeah. and as a lecturer? Sure. No day is the same, <laughs> okay. especially now that it's locked down. So we've been really trying to um, do online teaching. Mm -hmm. It's been very difficult because of resources, some students, there's data issues, there's network issues. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a laptop, how are you going to study? Yeah. You don't have a smartphone, you don't yeah. have an iPad or a tablet. Yeah. So it's quite tricky navigating the different um, situations that students find themselves in. Mm -hmm. But luckily enough, um, I lecture my modules in the college, um, Sidara Agricultural Campus. Okay. So we have a partnership with UKZN. Okay. And my students were lucky enough to have been brought back during lockdown okay. for the past two months. Oh, that's so nice. in a day, I wake up, if I have a lecture, I prepare for that in the morning or the night before. Um, definitely start my day with coffee. <laughs> Where would I be without good old coffee? 
and if i don't have lectures then i try and do my schoolwork. it's mm. not easy especially if you're not motivated i don't oh, want to lie and yeah. be like every day you know <laughs> laptop you know yeah it really sometimes you go through weeks or days or even a month and you don't know what to write about you don't know what to read about you can't find the right sources you are not motivated yeah, you don't want to do so what you are doing before <laughs> so you find yourself quitting a million times but mm -hmm. somehow you still get back to it mm. so there's no day that's the same mm. that's yeah. that's really awesome so um and obviously keeping with the theme of me being black girl scientist and wanting to spotlight all these phenomenal women in the field um i just wanted to know like as a young black woman in, what kind of challenges have you faced like being in the field that you're in the challenges that I've faced I think I might not have faced them personally but within the reading spaces that I'm in and because I do a lot of community work mm -hmm. so the women that I work with I really see a lot of um, I'm gonna say agricultural injustice because we're so used to other kinds of injustices but yeah. I'm in agriculture for example time you know we want women to thrive in agriculture but if we don't give them the time that they need to do so then it's a bit futile yeah um, you're a mom you're a wife you're somebody's um, parent um, or child uh, you're married you're expected to flourish in the field um, at the same time you have to take care of your household you have to cook you have to clean you have to so tend to your crops, <laughs> you know, so many hats to and it. you want to, you know, access markets. You want to buy land, which is very difficult for you to access because you're a female. Mm. You know, there's land tenures and rules that are not the same for men as they are for women. Wow. So, I feel like we're a little bit behind, even though we want women to flourish. But the challenges that I see in the field, I really feel like yo. You know, if we had so many open opportunities, the same as men do, mm. I think South Africa would really be food secure in a bigger, bigger scale. Really? And not even importing food at the rates that we are. But of course, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I don't want to be gender biased. <laughs> but the problems that I really face, I feel like if women are really given enough time and space to flourish in what they are actually good at, what they want to do, mm. we could be in a different situation in the country. Wow. Yeah. So we basically have the power to change the world. We this do want to always say. <laughs> we we do want to always say. Just give us a chance. Like, it's a it is. Well, it is. But with all the roles and the hats that we wear as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that you're a woman, already you have roles that are designed for you mm -hmm. that you have to fulfill. Yeah. So you need to fulfill that first, mm -hmm. according to society, and then flourish in your career, in your schoolwork, in your business. Mm -hmm. So we can't do it all. Sometimes yeah. it does work, sometimes it doesn't work. But I feel like if there were support structures in place, then you imagine how much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, I really think that we really need to push that agenda. Then we, yeah. need to, we need to be the change that we want to see. We do. I think it's really, really we important. Do. Yeah. So um, what do you wish you had known back then when you started maybe even your degree or your postgraduate mm -hmm. journey? What do you wish you had known back then that you know now? Yo, I always tell students that really want to do postgrad that if you need a break, Take it. I wish someone Take did that. a break. <laughs> but now, taking a break and knowing what to do during that break is different from just taking a break because in G, you know. Yeah. So if you don't really have a plan for a break, then I'd rather you not really take it. Mm. But plan for it because, again, time is very, very important. And depending mm. on what you do with it, that determines if you will know what to do after your break, mm -hmm. whether you continue studying, whether you start a business, whether you join another person who already has a business, or whether you continue, I don't know, studying or doing something completely different. Yeah. So if I had known that it's okay for me to take time off, I would have taken time off. <laughs> do you feel like you need a time off? I do, and I think that need in me manifested itself in different ways. Okay. Um, if I go in there, we'll go and attend. <laughs> I think that's why I can confidently say that people need to take a break. Students, postgrad students need to take a break when they feel like it's becoming too much or yeah. when they feel like they're, they're hitting a block and yeah. they can't get through it. So take a break, reflect, see a psychologist, talk to someone, seek a mentor. That um, is something that is so... I yeah. remember actually speaking to you a little bit about mm -hmm. mental health and stuff, but it's really something that we kind of don't want to talk about or yeah, shy away from yeah. especially being black I, I know a lot yeah. of black people shy away from that but i mean I, I mean i can't agree with you more if you need to take a break take a break mm. if you need to talk to someone talk to someone i mean yeah. 
something's got to give i mean you it don't want to find yourself burning yeah. out which i've experienced um uh, not myself but i've seen a friend of mine mm. go through like a real burnout and she was admitted to hospital anyways, yeah like, it gets day. it but gets you don't want it to get to a state where you're admitted into even a psychiatric ward yeah because it can happen yeah also being admitted into a psychiatric ward doesn't mean you're crazy it just yes. means that you need a specialized kind of help yeah which again is another story in itself but i feel like um as black academics because i mean again this area that we're in is dominated by males that are also not black mm-hmm. um how many women do you know that are professors in your field I, you know in my area in my I university how many oh deans gosh. that are black women do we know no, yeah. you know so we're yeah. really breaking through you know into a space where we're not really familiar with in mm-hmm. terms of history mm-hmm. so we do face challenges that other people don't understand yeah, absolutely so seeking help even professional help it yeah. really goes on it's an investment absolutely so we have to kind of stop looking <laughs> down on people who have challenges in that area yeah and mm-hmm. the whole black people and and this is something i touched on in the first video of this month actually is that it's very difficult to dream something you cannot see yeah so if i am t- aspiring to be a professor but i don't <laughs> know a female black professors it's like is it really like <laughs> yeah it doesn't seem like it's within yeah. reach yeah. but anyway yeah i love what you said about that so um yeah what kind of what message or advice um or any kind of line that you can give someone that's going to take from this video and run with it yeah. if they're thinking of of you know either starting the journey or maybe they're on the journey mm. maybe they're feeling like now during lockdown you know they're in a slump yeah. or you know anything um that you have to say to them I would honestly say that slow and steady wins the race um also if you're slow and steady you try and make sure that the outside pressure doesn't really affect you as much as it can because you you see your peers they are graduating with their degrees their masters their doctorates they're working they're buying houses they're buying cars cash and you are still like thinking about your next installment or whatever the case is yeah. and you really forget that hey what about the plan that you've had for yourself before this pressure came mounting on you So the more you validate the external pressure, you're then invalidating the pressure, the good pressure that you've given yourself. Mm-hmm. So I really say slow and steady wins the race and using time wisely, um especially now that it's locked down. Um it's very easy for the days to pass by. Absolutely. It's Monday, yeah. then next day, it's Friday. It's Friday. And, you're like, <laughs> and you can't even account it's for what you've done during oh, the week. God. So um you really need to use time wisely. Um I also got myself um a lockdown certificate. Oh wow. Yeah, I enrolled myself on an online course. You, you awesome. don't have to go to university or college or a formal place in order yeah. to get a qualification. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, I signed up for um a Harvard University health and nutrition certificate. Oh wow. And I got it. Oh my gosh, congrats. So I know for, for the few weeks of lockdown, I know that I've made something good out of it. That's it wasn't awesome. expensive. So yeah. there's even local institutions that you can I don't know, sign up with mm-hmm. um other courses that you can do. So use time wisely because once it's gone it's not going to come back mine we cannot get a refund no, on time you can't, you can't. wow that is so yeah. awesome i'm so glad that you actually like touched on that because i yeah when i am in the slump i'm just like okay covers like yeah. <laughs> just i was in a slump when i signed course. up for the course i was really in a slump i did not want to do what i was doing and There was an opportunity, it wasn't expensive and I signed up. It was money that I was going to buy a purse. Yeah. With <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't have a purse but I was thinking it, yeah. <laughs> but I, I actually wanted to ask you something that I probably should have asked you when mm. you said you're a lecturer. But yeah. how is that like dealing with students? What do you lecture as well? Like what kind of what yeah. years do you lecture and stuff? So there's a course that uh, I'm involved in, it's agricultural extension. Okay. Um and we I don't know if you know about rural extension workers. I'm um, extension extension agents. <laughs> Sorry for another day. But um we basically it's 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 a, it's a way of empowering farmers to be independent without depending on external assistance. So empowering them from within themselves as individuals as a group on how to do certain things and seeing how they can solve problems for themselves first oh, okay. before they depend on external help. Wow. So I'm within that kind of um space. And I'm currently involved in the undergraduate degree level of lecturing. Oh, nice! Yes. So I deal with 
I feel like I also become a parent if you're with undergrad because I understand the challenges that we deal with, especially as black um, mm -hmm. students. Um, first time students in university, there's nervous issues, financial issues. Of course. There are large. many language issues. Yes. It's a lot. So I find I'm myself as a 32 year old <laughs> mother to a whole <laughs> adult. <laughs> But, but it's worth it learning. because at least we know that there are people who are breaking barriers Absolutely. and coming into higher education, yeah. even to postgraduate studies, yeah. which is very important. That is really, really awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on my channel, Thank buddy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> this been, is so much fun. <laughs> it is fun. We could talk forever, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me. You've been so warm and welcoming me into your home Thank and you. you're really, really um helpful and even setting up everything and it looks beautiful this and thank lovely. you this is so much fun let's do so another day i know <laughs> same time next week same place. <laughs> thank you so much buddy i'll give you a thank chance you. to say anything else you want to say or say goodbye or um, tell them to subscribe i don't have a youtube channel but you can follow me on instagram <laughs> Uh, what's my Instagram handle? At um, Bali I'll put it. I'll, I'll, I'll put yeah. it on there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my first guest on my channel, and this is it. It's a wrap. I am so so happy I finally did this, and I cannot think of a better guest to have as thank my you first so one much. than thank you. you. So thank you so much for that. And mm -hmm. if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed and you're here, you're at the end of the video. Just press the subscribe <laughs> button. Yeah, might as well. Be loyal. You know. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you're notified when I upload my next video. As I said, this month is going to be all about women and beautiful women like Bali. So thank you so much and I will see you on the next video. <laughs> thank you guys. Bye. It's a wrap. Yay! It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> I might just have that in there as a blooper. <laughs>